What's up, everybody? I hope all is well with you guys on this blessed day Monday. Listen, real quickly, I want to give you 13 ways how you can get God to move on your behalf. 13 ways how you can get heaven to open up over your life. 13 ways, all right? So, you ready? You ready, sis? All right, we about to head to it, all right? So, of course, I got my handy dandy notes because guess what? Your girl write notes. Yes, I write notes. When I when I study my word, I write down notes so that I can maintain what I am reading so that it can be up here, right? So, I always write notes, especially if it resonates with me, I write notes. Um, guys, y'all see my new... Uh, my new little journal right here. I got it from Burlington's. I think it was like four dollars and ninety nine cents, something like that. Look at the price right there. Not bad at all, and it came with a little pen, so I thought it was kind of cute. But yeah, guys, I'm, I'm going to give you like thirteen ways how you can get God to move on your behalf, and thirteen ways. Well, actually, it's all included in this thirteen. Okay, so it ain't twenty six; it's only thirteen. <laughs> but I'm going to give you 13 ways how you can have heaven to open up for you. Ooh, hold on, y'all. My eye. Yeesh. It never fails, y'all. Do it. Your girl be messing with her eye. All right. Number one, and I got both of these from Proverbs 8 and Proverbs 9. Proverbs 8, Proverbs 9. So you can always go there for yourself to check it out, okay? Hold on. Number one, we must fear the Lord. Okay, so when you hear the word fear, it doesn't mean to be afraid of the Lord, okay? But fear means to reference, to honor, to respect. Okay, that's what, that is what fear of the Lord is. It is to reverence, respect honor all right and glorify the lord that's what that means okay so it, it doesn't mean for you to be <gasps> terrified of the lord no does not mean that although <laughs> but no that's not what that fear means <laughs> all right we must worship the lord actually you're going to hear me say this twice because that's how important it is in proverbs 8 it says to worship the lord but also in proverbs 9 in Proverbs 9, it says, um, I don't know what I'm throwing up two for. Yeah, it is what it is, right? But in Proverbs 9, it says that worshiping the Lord is the starting point to receive wisdom. All right? So in Proverbs 8, it says to worship the Lord, to acknowledge who he is. But in Proverbs 9, it also says worshiping the Lord is the starting point to receiving the wisdom of the Lord. So... Number three, we must hate all things evil. Remember, the Lord hates all things evil. That includes pride. That includes arrogance. That includes um, being foolish, right? Even being foolish, God, God don't like that. He don't like when his people are foolish or act in a certain way. You know what I'm saying? That is contrary to him. So, number four. And I just said this, we are not to be prideful or arrogant because that will actually block the blessing of the Lord over your life if you are prideful and arrogant. So you definitely definitely don't want to be like that. We must love God. In Proverbs 8, it says the Lord loves those who love him. Let me repeat that. Proverbs 8 says that the Lord loves those who who love him so make sure that you are in love with christ right make sure you love on him make sure you respect him make sure that you have a outstanding relationship with him god okay i finna say god lord yeah i just woke up like 30 minutes 40 minutes ago so yeah <laughs> but yeah make sure you love on him 
All right. Um, in Proverbs 8, it also says, Seek him early and diligently you will find him. Right? Now, a lot of people may say, I got to get up early in the morning to seek God. <laughs> early can mean any time of the day. They, they can mean any time, right? You just got to seek him. And that's my brother coming in, go figure, right? But anyway, no. Seeking the Lord early and diligently I mean you can seek him any time of the day all right so there's no particular time you got to wake up to seek the lord just make sure you seek the lord number seven take heed to his instructions you are to obey his instructions you are to listen to his instructions number eight is to not reject his instructions when you are rejecting something you are deciding that this is not something you want to do this is something that doesn't benefit you right so you never ever ever never ever want to reject the instructions of the lord all right um number nine whoever finds jesus finds life and obtain favor with the lord let me repeat that again. Those who find Jesus Christ finds life and obtain favor with the Lord. So if you are in need of favor, if you are in need of living life, find Jesus Christ. That is your way to it. Number 10, he who, I can't read my, my hand right, y'all. He who, oh, he who fails to find him injures himself and curses his life with death right so let me repeat that those who fail to seek christ curses his life and ends up with death so if you know you have not been seeking the lord you have not been trying to live right by the lord now is your time to make that happen sis because we can't have you cursed right um okay. anyway number 11 is to leave behind the foolishness leave behind the foolishness god don't want his people his children to be foolish right that is something god don't like and you shouldn't like it neither when you are acting foolish like come on we are not to be that way especially as single women or those who are seeking marriage you cannot be i think this is number 12 walk in the way of the lord walk in the way of the lord and he will give you understanding and knowledge and also he will give you spiritual insight uh, ask the holy spirit well actually i was just going to say that but i guess i can only say it this way too ask the holy spirit for wisdom and knowledge and he will provide you with spiritual insight um uh, 13 Receiving knowledge from the Lord will add more years to your life. That all those that I just recently quoted you are is in Proverbs 8 and Proverbs 9. All right. So take heed to that and I pray that you are blessed. All right, bye. -bye. What's up everybody? I hope all is well with you guys on this blessed day Monday evening. I am at this park. So it feels so good out here. They're actually moving the line. Go figure that I come on the day that they are doing this. But I'm going to quickly hurry up before they come down this way. I'm going to list seven types of women that we should not become. We should not desire to be. Seven types of women we should not become. All right. Number one, we should not become a nagging woman or a nagging wife. According to Proverbs 27 verse 15, it actually compares a nagging wife to a dripping faucet. They can never be turned off. They can never be turned away. That's a scary thing. And if you know a drippy faucet that would never stop dripping, that's annoying. So just imagine how that would be with your future husband, right? So come on, single ladies. Look, if you are a nagger, now it's time for you to repent and get delivered from that, okay? Because that is not the type of wife that you want to become. 
um, also in Proverbs 21, verse 19, it actually says it's better to live in a desert than to live with a nagging wife. Y'all know what a desert is, right? A desert is, right? That is the most hottest place. They say that it is better to live there than to live at a than to live with a nagging wife. You know that's bad, right? That is bad. So just think of how bad that is uh, when your your future husband is experiencing that, right? That's not a good thing. So we definitely do not want to become a nagging wife. And I hope that you was able to hear me because just as soon as I got to that, that part, then that's when they came over. All right. Proverbs 8 and 13. You are not to be the woman that shows arrogance or pridefulness. Proverbs 8 and 13. You are not to show pridefulness and arrogance. Number three. You are not to be the woman that has lack of understanding, lack of knowledge, and lack of wisdom. I'm going to try this again because here he come again. Alright. Proverbs 9 and 8. Proverbs 9 and 8. We should not be a foolish woman. Right? Who ridicules and take no responsibility for her error. We are not to be a foolish woman. It does not pay to be a foolish woman. We want our husbands to think that they are married to the most um, beautiful, intelligent, elo eloquent women on earth, right? We should not be, become a foolish woman. Proverbs 9 and 13 says, don't be a foolish and nosy woman. Look, if you are nosy, you have to be in everybody's business, you're not ready for marriage. Because I'm going to tell you now, if you are that type of woman that is nosy and you like to be in everybody else's business, your marriage will not last. You have to keep people out of your marriage. You got to keep people out of your relationship. So if you are a nosy woman, I'm going to let you know now, you're going to have to get delivered from that if you want a successful marriage and a successful relationship. Um, also, if you are a foolish woman that don't take responsibility, you have to get delivered from that or you will not have a successful marriage. Um, Proverbs 9 and, oh, actually 13, it also says, don't be a naive woman, right? Someone who is easily to get misled, someone who is thoughtless, someone who is careless. Being a carelessness woman will get you in time for trouble in your future marriage. So you definitely don't want to be that woman. So I pray that this blesses you, all right? Come on, single ladies. We got to do better. Well, when we know better, we do better, right? So don't be these types of women, all right?